Welcome to Breakthrough Success. I am your host, Mark Verdi, the content marketing expert, bringing you three new episodes each week where I and top-level guests teach you how to take your business to the next level and achieve your breakthrough. Hello, Breakthrough Success listeners. I just wanted you all to know before the episode actually starts, I've been working a little bit behind the scenes to give you something really special. So a while ago, I wrote my book, Content Marketing Secrets, which helps people create, promote, and optimize their content for growth and revenue. And I just put the finishing touches together to offer that for free to anyone who is interested. So if you want your free copy of Content Marketing Secrets, all you have to do is head over to markgaberti.com slash book. Now, let's jump right into the episode. If you want to build more wealth, one of the things you have to uh, incorporate within your lifestyle, within your business, is leverage. And leverage at its core is your ability to utilize resources that extend beyond your own. And today's guest, he knows a lot about leverage. He's raised his net worth from less than zero at 23 years old to self-made millionaire 12 years later and became financially independent at 35 through his investments. Despite his financial independence, he is still an active investor earning consistent investment returns in both up and down markets. Today's guest for episode 280 of the Breakthrough Success Podcast is none other than Todd Tresseter. Todd, it is such a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, Mark. Good to be here. Todd, I'm really happy to have you on the show. And leverage is such an important topic for wealth generation, for uh, living the life of your dreams. So I'm really happy to uh, be talking about this with you today. Before we go deep into it, I'm wondering if you give us a background on the uh, leverage equation and why you wrote that book. Yeah, I wrote the book because it's a subject that's not well understood. So, you know, people understand it's about using resources other than your own to accomplish more than you could accomplish on your own, right? That part, a lot of people understand. But then it, it ends there. Most people think in terms of only financial leverage. Some people also include time leverage, but there's actually six different types of leverage that we'll get into uh, in the discussion today. And then the other thing, too, that people really miss, and I think this is really important for your audience is to understand that there's really a whole nother purpose to leverage. And that's how you break through the limitations that hold you back from success, from greater success. And so it's like, if you look at your business and you look at everything that's holding you back, every limitation, everything that's a roadblock for you, what you'll find is the answer is leverage in every case. And people don't understand that that's how this game works. And so there's a lot more to understanding leverage and how you apply it to build wealth than simply you know, financial leverage, which is the one most people think of. And that's why they have myths around it, like how it's more risky and that kind of thing, which I'm sure we'll get into. And it's interesting you mentioned those two leverages, because I feel like financial leverage, people get like a 20% down payment for a property time leverage. Uh, you can hire an assistant or someone to help you with different things. But there are a lot of other uh, kinds of leverages. And I'm wondering, like, for some of these leverages, like building relationships is key. Like uh, you've got knowledge leverage, for instance, one of that's just one of the six that uh, Todd is going to uh, talk with us about. But I'm wondering how do we build relationships? Because that seems to be a key theme with leverage. Yeah, it's interesting you bring up relationship leverage as one of the first ones. So I grouped that together with network leverage, right? So network and relation leverage. And it's, you know, about other people's connections. So you're not limited to your own. And what's interesting about you bringing that up as the first one is that's my weakest point personally. And so it brings up an interesting discussion around this. There's a, there's a lot of stuff we're going to cover in this interview, and there's a lot more covered in the book as well. And what sometimes people do is they get intimidated. They feel like, oh, I'll never be good at all that. Mm -hmm. And the reason I mention it right now is because I'm not a great relationship leverage guy. I'm not a great network leverage guy. Um, but I am really good at systems leverage. Like that's my strength, systems and technology leverage I'm very good at. And so what you do when applying leverage is you start with whatever your strength is, whatever you're most inclined toward. And so clearly you're inclined towards relationship leverage. That was one thing that interested you. Um, you always start with what's most interesting to you because that's going to have the lowest barrier to entry for you. It's going to be your most natural path. And what you'll find is all the rest of the forms of leverage, the other six forms all connect to it seamlessly. And so you start at your lowest resistance and then you explore out to the other ones. Um, so I just want to mention that it's a really good way to apply leverage. 
And it's interesting you mentioned branching out into other ones. And um, I mean, it's good that you mentioned some of the leverages right away that go beyond financial and time leverage. And um, it's that whole idea that you're starting with something that you enjoy so that it's easier for you to embrace some of the other ones. And you mentioned network leverage being one that's a little, um, it's not like you're better at systems and technology leverage than you are at network leverage. And some people, they see the specific leverage like financial and time being the two big ones that a lot of people know. And they say, wow, I'm not good at that right now, but I want to get good at it. So uh, for someone with that mindset, how do we get better at implementing a certain uh, leverage point? You learn about it and you just start applying it your business. I mean, I know that's like this kind of crass, not very useful answer, <laughs> but I, you know, you got to be real, right? That's how it works. You, you learn about the leverage, you learn about the type of leverage and you begin applying it. And the more you apply it, the better you get at it. Um, so like I said, I'm kind of a master at systems leverage. That's how I built everything. That's how I built my wealth. Um, but I'm, I've been very reclusive. Um, I'm very much an internally directed person. And it's not natural for me to come out to these interviews. It's not natural for me to network with other people. And that's why the other, those other leverages uh, have not been strong. So you know what you should probably do, Mark, if it works for you, is let's kind of go through each leverage real quick and just kind of get a definition on them so people know the landscape. Let's go for it. Okay, so we've got communications and marketing leverage. And so that's accessing other people's audiences through things like magazines, newsletters, databases. And it's how you communicate with millions of people for the same effort as one-on-one. You know, so example, this, this interview right now, right? You and I are going to have a conversation and it's going to go out to your audience. And so what you're doing is you're leveraging my knowledge to get a great interview that's valuable for your audience, right? And I'm leveraging your access, the platform you built, and your audience to reach more people for the effort of a single interview, right? And so that bridges to another form of leverage, which is experience and knowledge leverage. And that's where you use other people's resources rather than, or you can leverage your own expertise. So you're leveraging other people's expertise or you're leveraging your own expertise into a business model. So it's knowledge leverage. And we talked about network and relationship leverage. That's other people's connections so you're not limited to your own. And then we've got technology and systems leverage, and that's where you set up scalable models. So the systems can do the work for you thousands of times for the effort of setting it up one time. And then you've got time leverage, which is other people's time, so you're not limited to just your 24 hours in a day. And then you've got financial leverage, so you're not limited to just your own financial resources, your own net worth. So those are the six types of leverage. And it's good you went through that list because now like that's the, uh, people understand more of the uh, boundaries, the, uh, the focus of this episode, all six of those leverages, but uh, you hear about all those different leverages, all of them being important. I wonder if you could uh, share how those leverages lead into wealth. I mean, I feel like people get how financial leverage would lead into wealth. Of course, you got to be a little calculated with that financial leverage because that can hurt you too if you don't do it right. But uh, how would the uh, leverages lead to wealth? All right. Well, all of them are about getting more done with less of your own resources. And so that's how they lead to wealth is you're creating more, you're creating bigger, you know, bigger, better. Um, and so all of them are about that, right? It's about getting beyond your own limited resources. They're also about breaking through the limitations in your business. And so like, let's use this book as an example. So I've got this great book out and I want to get the word out about it. What are some of the limitations I face? Well, they're not systems. I'm already good at that, but I do face marketing leverage. And so that's why I'm here with this, with this interview and other interviews is getting the word out about it, right? And that's the limitation I face in getting value out of this book and using it as a wealth creation tool is the marketing presence for it. I've already done all the hard work of writing it. It's the same thing in your business. Um, I don't know if you want to do this in the interview live, but if you want to name off like one limitation you're facing in your business, I'm sure we can identify a form of leverage to break through it. Mm -hmm. Um, honestly, this isn't something that I thought of like on the top of my head. I'm sure like after this interview, as I had more time to think, I'll definitely think about a limitation. I would say like in part, like, I feel like we always, uh, are so busy. So like, I would say time leverage, but I do have assistance helping me with different things. So I guess it depends on the week to say, uh, if time leverage is the biggest one I need to work on. Yeah. So let's look at what thing is not getting done because you're lacking time. What is the, what, what are some of the projects that aren't getting done because you lack time? Mm, that's a, yeah, that's a good thought. Um, I mean, I would say one of the big ones is uh, an audiobook that 
I'm working on. I mean, content marketing secrets, podcast domination, those are done, but there's another audiobook that I'm looking to release pretty soon. Right. So then you'd bring in, if the content is already written, then you'd bring in somebody to help you get the audio book actually done. And you'd be leveraging their skills and their their experience in creating the audiobooks and getting them in a format that Amazon will accept and getting them up live on the site. That would be an example where you leverage the expertise of somebody else so that it's simply you just reading off the book. Yeah, I mean, I see how that saves a lot of time because there's like, uh, for a big project that you have, there's just like so many little things that you also have to do. And I feel like you could get the big thing done, but if you're not getting the little things done, you're not really able to launch the project. It could be something simple as Tom mentioned in my example, like having the right files. Uh, you have to have a certain kind of file to uh, submit your audiobook to a place like Audible or ACX.com, which is how you get on Audible. So there are a lot of little things that are involved with the process. And I'm wondering, how do we address the little things? Now, I'm not just talking about time. It's not just little things. What you're doing is you're identifying any limitation you face, right? So you're like, you're saying, what's the time limitation around doing an audiobook? So you, you look at that and you go, okay, so what's the limitation? Now, how do I leverage my way out of it? Right? So it's either somebody else's knowledge, somebody else's time, their network, their resources, right? You just find out a way to get around that limitation, that barrier. And so those are what the six forms of leverage will allow you to do. And in every circumstance, I've, you know, I've never found an example where it doesn't hold true. And we could do this for all the six leverages, hit on all the limitations and figure out which leverage is going to help us. Yeah. And I said, as I said earlier, what happens is they're seamless. Um, so like, let's take my business example, right? So I have courses, I have books, and I have a content marketing site, right? And, and so people come to the website, they learn, they go through the, the funnels, the systems, and then they come back out on the, um, on the courses and the books in terms of what they learn. And so there's all kinds of leverage involved in those technology and systems leverage. There's n- leverage of my knowledge in how to achieve financial independence, leveraging that into a written form of books and courses. I have an assistant for time leverage because I'm not good at everything, right? So she designs all the graphics. She gets everything posted. Um, I have a technology assistant who does all the technology work for me because, frankly, he's forgotten more about technology than I'll ever learn. And he's just a brilliant programmer. And so he does all the programming work on the site and on and on and on. There's any limitation that would hold me back from growing the business. The only one I can't leverage is the writing time because that's my knowledge and that's the unique value proposition of the business. And so that's the one barrier I can't leverage. Other than that, everything's leverageable. And it's interesting you point out that this is something that I cannot leverage. So getting clear on what you have to do and you can't hand off to uh, other people. Uh, So that's a really interesting dynamic. And um, when it comes to leverage, like you need to have a starting point. Like you can use leverage, obviously, to uh, have more resources than what you currently have, but you need to have resources. And I feel like this is where a lot of people aren't able to properly use leverage. I'd like to use the time example because we've been talking about that a little bit. Let's say that, uh, yes, okay, I know that I have this objective that I'm just not getting to. I could hire an assistant to get it done, but I don't have the financial resources to make that happen. So uh, what would you recommend for someone there using financial leverage and then Uh, building into uh, time leverage, like what would be your recommendation for a person in that spot? Yeah, let me explain how it works. So what happens is you you can't leverage your way into a profitable business model. The business model has to be profitable first. So the natural structure that this flows from is you have to bootstrap it up to a profitable business model. Okay, that's the starting point. And that's where it's not leverageable. You have to figure out the business model. You have to develop the expertise. You have to design it. You start creating it. And then what happens is you get to a point where you're running into maximum time. You're putting as much time as you can and you use all these barriers to growth. And that's when you start applying the leverage. But the first thing that has to come is the profitable business model. You, the only way you can leverage into profitability is the one exception is if scale. If you'll get cost efficiencies due to scale, then leverage can sometimes turn an unprofitable business model into a, into a profitable business model. That's quite rare though and it's quite dangerous. 
in general, you have to get to the profitable business model first, then you use the leverage to expand the business out when you run into uh, your own personal resource limitations, being time and money. And again, notice how I'm constantly using that thing. When you hit your own limitations on resources, you run into your own walls, that's your immediate signal to go to leverage. That's when you immediately know that's the solution you want to look toward. And you got to look at what the problem is, and that tells you what form of leverage you're going to use. Um, so that's kind of the general model of how it works. And so the, the principle or the rule in here is that like before you apply time leverage, you have to get a higher return on the employee cost than the employee actually costs you, right? And it's the same thing like with financial leverage. You have to get a higher return on the, on the capital than the interest cost is. Okay. And again, that's this idea that the, the fundamental model has to be profitable before you leverage it up. I like that um, focus on the profitability because I know that if you over leverage and you're not profitable, I mean, like there's some businesses that suddenly go out of business. So I really like that distinction and uh, really, I mean, hitting your limitations before you think about leverage. And uh, some people like they may feel like they have hit their limitations when they haven't. Uh, other people uh, they just may not be at that point where they've hit their limits yet. So how can we uh, get better at hitting the limits? Like saying, like putting yourself in a position where you are profitable and you're saying, wow, I just don't have enough hours in the debt. Yeah, I don't think we have to get people better. Than that. My experience in working with entrepreneurs is they're brilliant at hitting their walls, right? I mean, they'll work 40, you know, 40 hour days. I'm making it up, obviously, right? They'll work. <laughs> They'll work long days. They'll work seven days a week. They'll push themselves to get this thing to profitability. And where they run into a wall is using leverage to get beyond it. What they start doing is what Chris Ducker called the superhero syndrome, where they start thinking they have to do everything because they're best at everything. I have news for you, Mr. Entrepreneur. You are not best at everything. Um, I've been shocked at how much better my assistants are at certain things than I am. Um, the one place I can't replace myself is my financial knowledge and the actual writing of the courses and books. Um, there's a unique voice in here that has to come out. And so that's the brand, that's the product, that's the one thing that can't be leveraged. It's very rare when you run into something you can't leverage. For the most part, when people think that they can't apply leverage, they can't replace themselves um, within you know, certain pieces of the business, it's usually more ego than it is reality. Um, if you really dig down to it, for the most part, you can replace yourself for almost all tasks within the business. Um, there's very specific tasks that you as the owner entrepreneur must complete. And most other stuff is leverageable. Um, I have a great exercise I'll share with you, Mark, which I do with clients sometimes on this, which is where what we do is we have the, the owner track everything they're doing in the business down to like 15 minute intervals, right? So pretty much anything that crosses their desk is deemed a failure of their business systems, right? It's, it, you just start with that assumption. It's a failure of business systems. It shouldn't be crossing your desk to begin with. How do you create another business system to leverage that away? What is the process by which it will never cross your desk again? And um, that's a really valuable process for people to go through because uh, you'd be surprised what you start thinking of and how creative you get when you, when you treat every thing that takes up your time as a failure of your systems. I really like that activity. That's getting me thinking. I mean, uh, like for this podcast, I don't really do too much of the work. I mean, I sit for interviews again. That's one of those things Tom mentions. That's like his knowledge, his writing. Um, like you can't really replace in the sense where like uh, having another host is like a completely different experience from what you're used to listening to breakthrough success. But when it comes to editing and show notes and Instagram pictures and LinkedIn posts, that gets done for me. Although thinking now I can make a bigger push to uh, delegate scheduling the episodes because that's yeah. something that I currently still do. So uh, even if you feel like you have a good grasp of what you're doing, once you are able to leverage, leverage, I couldn't think of any other way to say it, um, you can continue to leverage different areas as well. There's no cap once you are profitable and you're continuing on a profitable direction of growth. Well, you have to when you think about it, because if your goal is freedom, then there's sort of an entrepreneurial trap that people face, which is the more successful you become, the more the business takes out of your life. 
right? It just keeps growing in the commitment it's required on your part, unless you start applying leverage principles to remove yourself from unessential tasks within the business and unessential roles within the business. And those change over time. Stuff you thought was essential for you in the early years might be five, 10 years down the road, you realize you actually aren't essential and that somebody has been working with you for a while can take that task over. Or maybe you bring in a specialist for that and they can do it actually better than you did. And so if you want freedom, you really don't have any choice but to apply leverage. Leverage is your path to freedom because it's the way you remove yourself from the unessential tasks in the business and allow yourself the freedom to go enjoy your life and do the things you actually want to do. I mean, that's what this is really all about. It's not just about make more, you know? I mean, ultimately, yeah, you do make more and you do build a more successful business as long as you began with one that was profitable to begin with. Um, but it's, it's really more about life and about creating the life you want. And the only way you can do that is by applying other resources so you're not limited to your own. And I really like that uh, important concept where it's not just about making more and you really have to think more about lifestyle. I'm going to uh, pivot towards a story really quick. I'm not sure if you've, heard this one but um there is like a there's in this story there's a fisherman who's fishing fish and um basically lives a simple life and someone in like with an mba says hey um why don't you turn that into a business you fish the fish you sell the fish on the market and then the fisherman says well what happens next well uh, then you can expand that business even more, reach more people. The whole point of it is that the end of the story is that then the fisherman can go and fish and retire, basically do what he was already doing. So sometimes your definition of more may not may actually be leading you away from the lifestyle you want. And uh, using those leverage principles Todd has been pointing out throughout this episode can really help you reach that lifestyle. But uh, there is a point where it's like, why do you even want more than what you currently have? What are you currently uh, after within your lifestyle? So I just wanted to point that out because Todd made a really great point about uh, how it's not just about making more. It's about uh, having that whole lifestyle. Yeah. And so that story is called The Investment Banker and the, and the Mexican Fisherman. And it's actually, it's on my website. It's one of the more popular posts on my website. And so, you know, you can link to the show notes or whatever, but um, yeah, it's in there. It's a cute little story and it really drives home an important point. Yeah, we'll definitely throw that link in the show notes, markabury.com slash E280. Again, like I only remember a little bit of the story, so I'm happy that you have that posted up. So uh, for anyone who wants to do additional reading, the link will be in the show notes. And I know we've been talking about leverage I always ask people, like, what do you believe holds most people back from reaching their full potential? I believe leverage is key in that, but I'm wondering what else do you believe holds people back from being able to achieve their big goals and live their lifestyle? Um, well, I mean, let's count the ways, right? There's so many potholes uh, to maneuver through. Um, one is risk management, right? So in achieving financial goals, uh, it all boils down to what, I mean, this is going to not, it, this doesn't interview well, but this is how it works anyway. So let's just get it out there. It's mathematical expectancy, right? And that's, that's the formula that governs all wealth growth. And so whether it's in your business or in your investment portfolio and mathematical expectancy, most people understand probability, but mathematical expectancy is actually probability times payoff. And it's bringing in that payoff component is what really changes things. It completely changes the math of how wealth compounds because it means that outsized gains and outsized losses have an outside influence on the wealth growth equation. And that's why it's counterintuitive to most people because most people are used to thinking in terms of probability, the chances that you're going to succeed, the chance that you're going to fail. And that's why I brought it up to your question here is because you're talking about what are all the ways we can fail, right? And that bridges us to a conversation around risk management as an essential role. Well, the way this connects into your wealth growth equation, your mathematical expectancy equation, because it's probability times payoff, risk management is the loss side of the payoff equation. Well, leverage is the gain side of the payoff equation. So leverage is how you maximize the gains or the wins when you actually have a win. So in other words, if you take your business to success, here's one of the pitfalls entrepreneurs do to, to, to answer your question, right? I'm kind of giving the background for it and I'll answer it, is... One of the big mistakes entrepreneurs do is they're uh, into bright, shiny objects. They'll go a certain ways down the road with their business. They'll be several years into it. It's profitable. It's working. And along comes this bright, shiny object and it distracts them. And they go over to the bright, shiny object. And now their business kind of languishes. 
And then they pursue the bright, shiny, and they realize it's not the nirvana they thought it was. And they come back to their business, but now they lost a couple years in their business and they've lost momentum. And somebody else got a competitive advantage over them that they wouldn't have had otherwise. And so what entrepreneurs do is they get, um, they, they fail to recognize that uh, wealth growth is a boring process, that the creativity comes in developing the business and in taking it to profitability. That's your creativity. There's also creativity in scaling it up. But ultimately making money is boring because it's repetitious, right? You build business systems and you repeat your implementation regularly and reliably. Um, nobody thinks that cooking a McDonald's hamburger is creative or interesting or even tasty, um, but it's a business process that's repeated millions of times a day and it's profitable. And so that's kind of how it works for business and entrepreneurs get attracted to the OA. But the point is, um, you want to leverage up when you have a success and take it as far as you can, get it as big as you can because you want that outsized gain as part of your wealth growth equation. And vice versa, when you're developing your business and you hit a dead end avenue, fail fast, fail quick, right? Control your losses. Always figure out how to develop your business with carefully controlled losses. And that's how you intentionally manipulate the uh, mathematical expectancy equation using these two key principles of leverage and risk management. And it's interesting you point out how wealth management can get really boring at times because it is repetitious. And um, I mean, you want to have it a sense of boring because you don't want like excitement within the uh, like your portfolio or anything like that, because, you know, it could go really far down, for instance, or you might be moving too quickly. So like um, it's very important to just do the repetition as Todd pointed out, because um if you get too deep into it, if you're uh, sometimes you miss out on some of the important things by taking too much uh, action, that's just from an investing standpoint, from a business standpoint, like take action, but uh, definitely take the time to think about what you're doing and what your current wealth situation looks like. Yeah. Boring profitability is a good thing. You know, and that ties, us, that ties us over to financial leverage as a topic because financial leverage is unique in that that's the only one that actually increases risk. Um, you can actually apply the other five types of leverage and risk less or risk comparably. Um, and so that's a mistake a lot, a misnomer a lot of people have about leverage is they think that it increases their risk and it doesn't necessarily. It depends on how you use it and how tactical you are with it. The only exception to that is financial leverage. Financial leverage is the one form of leverage that cuts both ways. It makes the good times great and the bad times unbearable. Oh, yeah. It's, I really, again, like how you point out that risk factor because I mean, it's also interesting that it's only for the financial side of me. Like people hear leverage, they think risk. They think high risk, high reward. But in some cases, you can get asymmetrical risk where uh, you have that high reward, but uh, you're not really risking anything in some cases. So really interesting that... Uh, you point out some of those differences and key misconceptions with leverage. And I know you've done a lot of research on this to acquire your knowledge. I'm sure you've probably read a bunch of books. So I'm wondering if you could share with us three books that you believe will have a positive impact on us. Oh, okay. I wasn't thinking of that. Let me throw out um, one book that I've always liked is Essentialism. Um, I feel that that's a really valuable book. Um Another book that I really like is um, by the stuff by Stephen Pressfield about do the work, um, turning pro, and um, War of Art. Are you familiar with those? Oh, I'm very familiar with Steve. Yeah, those are favorites for mine. I've you know I've been coaching people for almost two decades now, and I find that everybody deals with resistance as they move their yes. business forward. They move their success forward. Uh, me included. And I teach this stuff and I coach clients on it. And I face resistance like everybody else. It's hardwired into our DNA as humans. And one of the keys to success is learning how to overcome that resistance faster and more efficiently and go straight into it when you experience it. And then the thing I like about essentialism, and again, you caught me off guard. I didn't realize I was going to pull three books. Um, the thing about essentialism that I really like is in today's day and age, there's more to do than we can ever accomplish. And so you've really got to understand what are the key factors that determine success and focus on those. Uh, and that ties directly back into leverage as well. Todd, thank you for those great book recommendations. Those will all be in the show notes, marketbirdie.com slash E280. We'll also throw in content marketing secrets in the show notes, which is available in all the major formats, Kindle, paperback, and audio. 
Uh, that will, again, be in the show notes, markroberti.com slash E280. And before we wrap up this episode, Todd, I have asked you several questions throughout our time together, but what do you believe is one question that we need to be asking ourselves more often? What's holding us back? What's keeping me from achieving what I want? When you look at that, that'll show you how to break through. And I, I really like that question because, I mean, again, these questions really get us to think really deep. If we could think about what's holding us back, I mean, that's very powerful. So, Todd, thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you for sharing all of your great insights throughout our time together. If you want to learn more about Todd, head over to financialmentor.com. Definitely very easy to uh, remember. He's got a Design Your Wealth Plan course on there. Uh, he's got a few other things on there as well. Uh, Todd, I wonder if you want to uh, elaborate on that, what Financial Mentor offers and some other places where we can find you. Yeah, no, Financial Mentor is my hub. That's where everything is. So financialmentor.com. And um, yeah, so I have, uh, I, this is my sixth book. So I have six books up on Amazon and up on all the other outlets where you buy books. Um, I've got one course now, eventually there'll be three. And the one course is expectancy wealth planning. And actually the leverage equation uh, was adapted from just two small lessons in that wealth planning course. So if you got value from the leverage equation, you got value from this discussion, it might be a course you want to look into. And again, all that's over at financialminter.com. And even if you don't want a course or a book, I've got over a thousand printed pages of uh, free content, educational content. It's all about advanced retirement planning and advanced investment strategy. I don't do any of the 12 tips to save money or any of the other mundane stuff. It's all advanced stuff. So love to have you come over and be part of the community. Todd, thank you again for coming on the Breakthrough Success Podcast. It was a pleasure to hear all the great insights about leverage today. Thank you, Mark. How does over 100 retweets per day sound to you? My free ebook, 27 Ways to Get More Retweets on Twitter, has you covered. I use the methods within this ebook to get over 10,000 retweets every single quarter to learn. 